Ohayo gozaimasu, as my Japanese friends would say, or here we say good morning. For today's video, we're going to take another look at the Thani editor and another feature of it, and that is uh, how we can use the debug features. Now, if you've been working primarily or exclusively with uh, your Raspberry Pi Pico, you'll notice that on your uh, run menu, the debug functions are pretty much all grayed out and non-functional. However, there is a trick to it. Now, of course, I'm going to show you how I uh, work with it when, when needed. Um, I got to make sure, okay, yes, I'm on, that's maybe not right. Okay, I'm in MicroPython on uh, the Raspberry Pi that's connected, this guy. And uh, I'm going to open Raspberry Pi Pico and my plot sign program that I'm using in several of these other presentations. Now, uh, if I look here, I can run the program, but none of these are functional. Now, I will say that no matter how I go about this, these aren't really functional because you're not going to be able to go into the menu when you're running, so it's easier just to memorize uh, the F7 key, F8, F6, etc. The shortcuts just work better than the menu. Uh, but how do we get this to work? Well, if we're working on a small section of code that we don't need the Pico for, where we're trying to figure out maybe an algorithm or something of that nature, we can just bring it into Thani as simply a program and run it in, in Thani within the Python 3 interpreter. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to close this one, and I've got a copy of this program on the computer. So I'm going to go into this computer. There's the exact same program. Here you can see it's on the computer, not in the Pico. We'll open that and it pops up. Now you'll see that, okay, it still doesn't care where we got it from, but I still don't have this. I'm going to go down here. Now, if you work with multiple Picos uh, on Thani, you'll notice that almost everyone gets assigned a new COM port number. I think I'm up to about 27 or something like that. But if you click on that, you can go to Local Python 3. All right, and then depending on how you configured Thani in the interpreter uh, settings, uh, that'll be the version of Python that it's using. Now, if we go to our run menu, you'll notice that we've got debug current script and uh, a nicer one and a faster one. Which one you use is up to you. Um, oftentimes, I'm just using it to slow down the iteration of uh, while loops or other types of loops. And so I can monitor data a little more controlled rather than trying to read print statements that are scrolling across the bottom of the screen. So we will select, uh, we'll, we'll both do both of them just so you get an idea of what you're going to see. Um, right now, we are uh, stepping through uh, line by line and almost word by word within the code. And you'll see how I'm hitting the F7 key on my keyboard. And now we're seeing how all these things are moving along. And this allows you to go slow. And you could, of course, have print statements. We'll see that here in a second. Let me get to there. Print all that. That shows up down below. And this gives you a controlled way to see data. But I can make it a little bit better yet. Um, now, at some point, if I just want to let it fly, I can click up here, hit the resume button, and the program just runs uh, freely. Let's do one more cool little thing. I want to see what's in the variables as the program is running. And I just got to find my my button, it's in view, variables, see that right there? That'll bring up a window over here where we're going to see what's in those variables as we do this. So again, I am going to say run. This time I'm going to say faster. I don't need to see every word. I just need to see every line execute. So as I do that, notice over here on uh, the variable section, we're seeing some stuff happening. 
A degree is uh, one of my variables. It's at zero. Radius is at one. Angle in radians. Now we'll get through this loop iteration a few times and you're going to see these vari values changing. So you can monitor your variables very easily as you're debugging your program. This is an extremely handy uh, capability, but it does require you to run it in uh, Python on the computer, not within the Pico. But oftentimes when you're doing this, you really focus more on an algorithm that's dealing with mathematics and not necessarily inputs and outputs. So if you haven't used this in the past, give it a try. I found it to be very handy in some of my more complex programs by just breaking out that section of code, putting it into the regular editor, and running it locally, and monitoring all the variables. Hope this helps you on future projects. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Good to see you here again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.